Well, Chuck, I think that's a genius idea. I may have accidentally taken just a hair too much off of that, but... Good morning. It's been a while since we've looked at stuff that's come in the mail, and some stuff has come in the mail lately, so let's take a look at it. Actually, some of this stuff came in the mail quite some time ago, and I haven't had a chance to give a proper thank you. First thing I want to look at comes from Ron. It's a photograph that he took in 1977, and this is from the town of Columbia in California Gold Country. So this is a historic site. Hopefully you can see that image. There's a blacksmith with a wagon in the background. So pretty cool picture, and I think this will either hang in my downstairs office, or when I get the office up here and the shop done, maybe it'll move up here. But until then, it'll live in the house. So thank you very much, Ron. I appreciate the photo. It's also dusty. You can tell I've had it around for a little while. And there's a Christmas card from Kevin. He said, really enjoy watching your YouTube videos. I have learned a lot from watching them. Happy holidays. Well, happy holidays and Merry Christmas, Kevin. This one is from James. He said it would come wrapped in duct tape, and he wasn't kidding. And James is from the Sprinkled Donut Forge. I don't think there's any donuts in here, though. And what James has sent is his version of a pair of rail spike tongs. Well, that's a nicely made pair of tongs there. Let me find a rail spike and see how these fit. This is a little bit different take on the, than the other kind of rail spike tongs. It just holds the head sideways like this. And that's a nice grip. I'm pretty impressed with that. Thank you very much, James. Maybe one of our upcoming projects will have to involve a rail spike again. I'm not sure if we've ever done a rail spike tomahawk, Maybe that will be a good project. And this box is not one I was expecting. There's some bits and pieces here. I, I have absolutely no idea what this is. Hopefully there's a note. Paper for starting the fire. an envelope. If there's an envelope, that implies a note. And there's a clamp. I'm now very intrigued. Ooh, there's some green stuff in here. Well, thank you very much, Chuck. All the donations really do help keep the videos coming. Greetings. I wanted to thank you for being so willing to share your knowledge. I've learned a ton from you. You are the first mentor I've had that I didn't have to prove myself to before the teaching started. Here's a hold down for your new anvil. Ah, that explains the clamp. Check the fit on the pritchel hole before assembly. I threw in a couple of lathe bits in case it's too big. It seems to work better with a close fit. If it's too small, I'll make you a new one. Additionally, here's a couple of bucks to have lunch on me when you and Janet go to town sometime. I think we're actually going to head down to Taos in just a couple of days, and we will certainly let you buy us lunch. Thanks very much, Chuck. Now, what I don't see are any uh, assembly instructions. Well, that definitely goes in there, and this pins across there, and this goes in the Pritchell hole, so I think that's pretty obvious. But to be odd... Honest, I have no idea what this piece does. It's got a little spring retainer in there. You may have to explain some of this to me, Chuck. That may be too dense. This looks like it goes in the hardy hole. But I don't know if that's just a, an adapter to use the hardy hole for a different kind of hold down or, or what the case may be. Let's go over to the anvil, see if we can figure this out. By the way, Chuck, James... If you are selling these things and you want me to post your information, let me know down in the comment section and leave a contact email or a website address. I'll put that in the pinned comment, but I'm not going to share your information unless I know that you actually want me to. Now I bet this piece goes in the hardy hole there. And 
I bet it'll fit a regular hold fast. I can't find my old hold fast, but that's the same size. So I'll bet you that will give me just what I need to use a regular hold fast. Still don't know what that is. And that is just a little bit tight. So that's going to need to be turned down a little bit. So I'll put that in the lathe and do my best to do that. But I am still at a complete loss what this does. It doesn't fit there. doesn't fit there. Does it go on here? Ah, I see. That goes on here. And that gives you an adjustable clamp for uneven stuff. You're pretty smart, Chuck. Let's go turn this. Light pass and then try it. A little bit more. I'm not sure that Pritchell hole is perfectly parallel either, so I think I'll probably end up taking a little bit more off the leading edge there. Hopefully I didn't take too much off. Good and solid. Gotta leave the head of the railroad spike hanging over the edge of something there. That's pretty darn nice. Well, Chuck, I think that's a genius idea. I may have accidentally taken just a hair too much off of that, but. It seems to be working okay, so I'm not going to worry about it. Really simple, just fits right in there. So if anybody's got a Fontanini anvil, and Chuck is selling this device, you might want to get a hold of him. Look in the pinned comment, and if he's not selling it, maybe he doesn't mind if you use his idea. But that's really quite solid. Almost every anvil hold down is going to pivot a little bit right under the clamp. It's just fairly typical, but it keeps it from bouncing off. The only other thing to try out is this adapter for the hardy hole, and I just cannot find the holdfasts that I used to use at my old anvil. I don't know if they're out in the shipping container in a shed. I doubt that I put them in a scrap bucket because they were still good, useful tools. I just hadn't taken the time to figure out how to adapt it. Apparently, the solution's quite simple. But I am making holdfasts today, so I'm gonna go ahead and make one for this and then we'll try it out. This has cooled down enough to try it. Let's see if my guess is correct. It's 
So here's the real test. I don't think it works. Nope. Okay, apparently that's not what that's for. So Chuck, leave a comment and tell me what your intent was. If this was it, it was a really good idea, but apparently you can't get the hold fast to really cam in there when this is moving in the anvil and this is moving in the block. The fit's about right though. It's about a 16th inch loose and that's the way I usually make my hold fasts. But I think it was a great idea if this is what your idea was, but sometimes great ideas don't pan out. It was, on the other hand, a good place to put this to shape the bend. So it's very useful for that, and I'll continue to use it for that purpose. So Kevin, Ron, James, and Chuck, thanks so very much for sending some stuff out. And for everybody else, thank you for watching. It's you, the viewers, that make this channel a success. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you Sunday morning when I use these two tools to turn this railroad spike into a little tomahawk. See you then.